Hello everyone and welcome back to another Forerunner video. For this video we're going to be going through Orochi's customization for both his light and dark versions that I have for him. I'm super super excited to sh finally show you this. I've been asked quite a few times over the past few months and years and hopefully this will answer everyone's questions. Uh, I expect this to be quite a thorough video so this should answer absolutely everything. If, uh, if you do have any more questions though feel free to ask them in the comments and if you enjoy it please hit the like button as well. So let's begin. So first of all let's go and have a look at our emblem just quickly and you can see my stats as well if you want. We've got uh, story mode at 100% and then we've got some KDA there. Time played, yes, I've been playing this for a while now, just over three years now, or well, nearly three years. So emblem, so we have two different emblems that we have. I use this red one as my main emblem, and then the white one I use for the white Orochi. So let's quickly go and show you this. So I have the background as that kind of Skyrim looking emblem. And then the color is the second red and black for the second colour and black for the third colour and if you want to make a note of those details there as well feel free to pause the video uh, we have our symbol number one the skull with the sword going through its head and we have the outline as this gold and silver one with a nice blue gem at the top so that's the emblem the white one is very very similar it's just white and black instead of red and uh, white, uh, red and black. So that's that. And the outline is this uh, sort of platinum version as well. So that's those two. Uh, let's get in to heroes and let's actually start looking at Orochi's customization very very excited to show you this uh, it's been a long long time okay so uh, first of all actually let's go into our original Orochi so this is the one I've used for the longest amount of time he is the original dark Orochi that I've used since the year one so the first year so his equipment and weapons so we have elegant pit viper chest and all of these are going to be on legendary because we are in fact a reputation 70 with orochi which is the maximum rep you can have don't pay too much attention to the perks on these because i've had to make a few changes as i'm looking to switch up my orochi's customization actually for potentially some videos in the future but uh, we will have to wait and see what that's going to be uh, that's kind of what prompted me to do this video as well, as I was kind of going through it all. <laughs> uh, so, next one, Elegant Pit Viper Arms as well. Uh, I wanted to keep the same sort of spike theme going, as well as dark, because I thought that looked a bit more kind of evil, a bit more mysterious. I took a bit of inspiration from things like Sauron in Lord of the Rings, and also Darth Vader as well. And interestingly, I think the character of Darth Vader, he was actually initially uh, inspired by samurai helmets and samurai warriors, so it's kind of gone full circle in that respect. Uh, our blade, we have the Tadayoshi blade. I really, really like this one because it's gold and it has a nice dragon insignia straight down the blade, which you can see there. Really, really nice. Next up, we have the Ippai hilt. This is again going with the black and gold theme and it has a nice white jewel in the center there as well which I'm not sure what it is but it's a nice addition. Then we have the Sakakuru Guard. Uh, I really like the patterns and symbols on this one as well and it fits with the other two very very nicely. So that's all his equipment and weapons and let's go back and go to appearance. So ornament, I have Death's Emissary. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to get this unless you won the faction war back in season two. And if you were a samurai as well, 
but uh, don't be disheartened though because there's some other good ones which you can use instead so you've got uh, Polyon's Crest which is this one which you could use and you've also got some other ones you could also use uh, this one as well <clears throat> uh, which is quite cool I think but yeah I use Death's Emissary for this one uh, traits so I use the male version I think I chose him because I think he just looks a bit more filled out than the female but who knows I might switch to a female for a video uh, let me know if you'd like to see more of that but for those interested this is what the female looks like uh, and I use this skin color as well uh, material I obviously use black which can be unlocked at reputation 7 level 20 and I have this at uh, usage ticked on. Uh, for some reason, when you untick it, it turns white, which doesn't make too much sense to me. But yeah, make sure these are all ticked so that you keep the black look. Okay, so chest and back, I use nothing. I'll get into a bit more detail as to why that is later on when I show you my colors. Uh, so yeah, I have nothing for that. I have no symbol, but I do have the dragon embossing as I think it makes it look a bit more stylish. Left shoulder, I have meniscus. I will show you why in a second. Uh, symbol and embossing are nothing. And the same for the right shoulder as well. Standards, I use Whirlpool 1. Uh, this is getting into some quite high reputation stuff though. This is quite, this is reputation 38 you need for this, but you can use alternatives. Uh, symbol, I obviously use my emblem, which I like to have on all my characters visible, as uh, I find it makes the characters a little bit more unique. And no embossing either. Legs, I have nothing on those, and nothing on the symbol. I don't have the uh, symbol there either, and no embossing. So you might be wondering, well, that seems quite basic. Um, not much in terms of patterns, and I'm going to show you why that is now. So the colors, neutral, I use bleeding, which is a fairly low rep reward. It's reputation zero and level 18, so you should be able to get that fairly quickly. This is kind of the main thing that makes your character look dark uh, with the black colors. Right, so attacker. For this one I use Dawn of War which can be purchased with the Apollyon's Wolves mask outfit and this adds a little grey color to anything you have. So this is the reason why I use the meniscus on the arms so it's very very minimal and it, you can't really notice anything. Uh, and that is what enables me to have a dark looking Orochi even in things like 4 versus 4 and in brawls as well. So a lot of people have asked why that is, uh, that is why. And also if you look down to here where my emblem is, the whirlpool effect is very very minimal as well. So it keeps a dark theme throughout. Defender, I use Pete Bog and also that is very very subtle as well so you can't really see much difference he looks like he's just a dark Orochi still uh, so that's how I make sure that attackers and defenders look uh, as dark as possible if we just quickly go to chest and back if I were to change it to something then you can see it would actually change the color so even though it makes it look black on the neutral uh, it makes it look more black on the neutral this just ensures that when I do multiple two versus twos or four versus fours that it looks black still uh, so that answers that abilities for the feats i don't do two versus i don't do four versus four that often but i use bounty hunter um, and i use revenge attacks and i use sharpen blade and i also have fear itself I like to use ones which mean that I can still use my character. I don't use like the bow anymore because I obviously go for deflects in my videos and things and I want to get some cool gameplay so I don't want to waste time getting kills with stuff that potentially won't make it into a video. Executions, I have all of them. 
and I even have the new special event ones as well. So I have Requiescat in Pache, I have Rampage of Ragnarok, and I have Shurio Adventure, which is the recent Halloween event one as well. Uh, in Moats, I use the I Am War at the moment, and I use the Kill card as well. But I have all of these. And I even have this one here, Proudly 70, which is my most prestigious one. Uh, I think I've only used this once in a video, so I might actually put that on and use that more often. So there we go. Uh, signatures, I use Ganbaru. I used to use Inori, which was quite cool, but this one with him kind of meditating, I thought it looked quite cool, so I switched for that. Effects, so I bring war, so this is what makes him look much, much cooler. Makes him look so much more unique and menacing. And uh, I really like putting him in thumbnails when he looks like that because I think he looks awesome. Uh, that's obviously part of the Apollyon's Wolves outfit bundle, and I think you can buy that for about, I think it's 20,000 still. Uh, I have it on executions as well, and free roam, and combat. Uh, ah yes, and the combat emotes I do, I have cut to the chase and twirl the whirl, which is very very nice and sleek and stylish. So that is that. So that is all of my dark Orochi. And now we're going to be getting into the Light Orochi. So Weapon Blade. I use the Sakakuru Blade. This one is a much more, is a much straighter sword actually to the other ones. Normally they're a bit more curved. So I thought I'd try and make it a bit more interesting by having a straighter blade. Because uh, it was different to the Dark Orochis, which is more curved. And it's very, very, it looks very, very basic, but that kind of shows that it's the lighter Rochi is more down to just his skill, I thought. So, not down to flashy stuff. He has a white hilt, so again, going with the same white and gold color scheme. This was obviously the whitest. And we have a white and gold guard as well, the Tadayoshi guard. For our helm, we have the Kuroshi helm. Uh, for this one, he has these kind of materials, uh, pieces of material which come down all around the edges. And interestingly, these change colour depending on the colour paint pattern that you use. Uh, all of the rest of his helmets are all fairly black and grey, so this was essentially the whitest one, so it made it went well with the colour scheme that I wanted. And yeah, I thought that one matched the best. We have the Tossai chest, which is hasn't got as many spikes as the evil Orochi. And I wanted to make sure that that was the case, because uh, spikes are obviously for evil people, and we don't want that on our good Orochi. So he has a sleek new uh, chest there, and he has two awesome dagger looking weapons either side as well. And he has this nice kind of patch on his back left shoulder, which was uh, a bit more unique. Elegant Pit Viper arms, because I think that kind of fills his arms out a bit more and looks much better so than some of the other ones. So the Tenma arms. I think they look terrible personally because they make him look really weak. Even though he's got those nice large spikes there, yeah, this one just looks more, more fulfilled and more, more menacing. I think. Uh, so that's his equipment and weapons. Appearance-wise, ornament. I use the crowned conquest, which can be unlocked by playing random quests, and I think you can still get this one, unlike this one. So yeah, you'll still be able to use this one. And also that changes colour as well, those little white bits around the centre. Uh, I chose that one because it's more... goes better with the character. There's sort of some diamonds and it's a wolf's head. 
and some wings, some angel wings as well, which is more for a good, good guy character. So chest and back, similar to the last one. We have nothing on most things. We have meniscus because you can't just have nothing on the shoulders. So that's the least intrusive one. And the stand as well for one and nothing on the legs. Uh, this is, I have here, the male version, but this is also the uh, female. And yeah, same settings as the last one for the traits. Material I have is light. It is very similar to a new one which just came out a couple of weeks ago as of year three, season 12. And it's worth 10,000 steel. There's not too much difference between these two. I might switch to that if I have a spare 10,000 steel, but I might just leave it for this for now because I want to spend steel on some other things which I have some ideas for in the future as well. So I might just hold off on that for now. Usage, I have this all ticked off. For some reason the opposite happens. Here, here's actually goes darker when you tick it off, which is not what we want to do. So leave those all ticked on if you want to copy this color and outfit scheme. So colors, I use Thin Ice for neutral, which is all white, which makes sense. This is unlocked by acquiring the Frost Wind Festival bundle or scavenging the battlefield. I'm still not sure whether you can get this. Uh, it might come back this winter. That's the winter of 2019, 2020. Uh, but Attacker, I use <laughs> Red Wine, which is Reputation 0 and Level 1. So everyone will have that. And Defender, I have Samurai Defense, which is unlocked by owning Year One Heroes Bundle, which you may or may not be able to get if you've just joined recently, but you can get some very similar ones as well. You can maybe get like a lighter one through other methods as an alternative. So those are his colors. And let's go on to his abilities. So the feats are exactly the same. Uh, I'm going to switch that to revenge attacks. Yeah, I normally have it as revenge attacks. Um, executions, they are all the same. Emotes, I have you there and twirl the still. I use this one because it works better with the effect, I think. And uh, speaking of effects, a lot of people have been asking me what the effect for Light Orochi is. And I'm going to tell you exactly what it is right now. So the effect for Light Orochi is something called Radiance. And this gives him a nice kind of elegant shine on his sword. And Unfortunately, this can no longer be gotten, I don't think. Uh, it says here, scavenging the battlefield or unlocked by acquiring the Rite of Champions bundle. I got this, I think I've had this for about a year or two now. I think it might be closer to two years. And I haven't seen it since, so it might be coming back, I'm not sure. You might be able to get it, that Rite of Champions bundle. I'm not sure what that means. You might be able to buy that. But uh, as far as I'm aware, for me anyway, I got this about two years ago and I haven't seen it since. But you might be able to get an alternative, uh, an idea which you might be able to get. Oh, Deep Freeze looks really cool, actually. You could have that one. Or you could use uh, maybe this one, which makes him look even whiter. Or this one as well but yeah for those that wanted to know I finally answered it it is called radiance so watch out for that if it ever comes back so that is it for light Orochi uh, we have just one more Orochi to go through which is this one here so for those of you who have seen my recent Orochi montages, I've kind of made a series and I've named that Shadow Light. And it basically is kind of like a, it's more than just kind of an Orochi montage. I tried to make it a bit more of a story. And it's basically <laughs> light and dark Orochi, like fighting each other. So these guys, <clears throat> that's what I tried to do. And in the second one, the light Orochi unfortunately gets possessed by the dark Orochi who returns and he 
basically turns him evil. So this version is exactly the same as the light Orochi, but I have just changed all of his colors to dark Orochi. Um, so everything else is exactly the same. Uh, so there, I think, yeah. So that is going to be everything. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. It's been, blimey, 20 minutes. So this was a lot quicker than my test run I did, which was 30 minutes long. Uh, hopefully this was quite comprehensive and you've learned something. I just wanted to add one last thing before I go. Uh, this might be of interest to some people. If I go back into customization and go to appearance. So in most of my videos, you will see the white and blue in 2v2 modes and 4v4 modes. So what I do is, so how I choose whether I'm gonna use light or dark Orochi for a video, basically depends on which team I'm put on. So if I'm put on the defender team, I will pick a light Orochi so that he will have this white and blue effect uh, or white and blue paint scheme. You'll very rarely see the white and red and that is because I normally just use this one because it's uh, a more of a good guy character color pattern. Uh, if you've seen white and red then I've probably done that <laughs> by mistake to be honest. Uh, and if we go back to dark Orochi I will go to colors and you'll see that uh, because the dawn of war looks more like the neutral than the defender one does then i will pick dark orochi if i'm on the attacking team so that's just a little interesting bit of information of how i choose whether i'm going to be dark or light orochi in my videos for 2v2 and 4 versus 4. Uh, by the way, those materials that I've chosen, so if you look at the sort of under armor material, he's got that kind of light material, dark sort of gray, green kind of color. For the attacker and defender, I used very, very similar colors to that, so you can barely see any difference. So that's what I chose to make it very similar, as well as having the black, it's also similar material color. So that's all the things I just had to add there. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments. And if you have enjoyed it, then please leave a like as well. I know people have asked me for this video for a long, long time now. So I want to make sure that I get everything covered. So thanks very much for watching. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next video.